so excited to be here with you all today and talk about swift techniques for testing. More specifically, we're gonna try to answer the question, how can we make our tests easier to write, easier to understand, and less prone to developer errors? Now, before we actually get into answering that question, we're gonna focus on two main techniques, using enums with UI tests, and then later, function builders with XCT assert. We'll start off with enums. The example app that we'll be using throughout the talk is written in Swift UI, and it has four main features. The first, comparing three currencies to one base currency. The ability to change which currency is used for the base currency by selecting one of the currencies in the table. The ability to enter the amount of money used for the currency conversion. And lastly, displaying the names of each country's currency with their flags. Before we get into actual tests, I just want to do a quick primer about UI testing with SC test case. Now, a lot of us are using XC test case for unit tests, which is primarily focused on the business logic. But when you're UI testing with SC test case, you're using element queries or XC UI element queries to find elements on the display and then check Booleans against those elements. So here's an example. If we want to find a label with the text hello world, we use the current application and the screen that's displaying, and we search through an array of all the existing static text on that screen. And static text means label. And you can do this for all types of elements, text fields, tables, buttons, et cetera. So let's get into our first test. Here we're going to test what the initial state of the app is when you load it up. So it's a pretty simple test. The first thing is we're looking at where is the base currency label and making sure that, that it, it exists. Then we're looking for the United States dollar label. And the reason why it's important to check this is because it's a label, it tells us that it's actually currently our base currency. All of the other currencies are in a table. Then we want to just make sure that the initial value of our text field is one. But the issue is with this test is we're hard coding these strings. And if we want to access these elements in other tests, we're then going to have to look for it again and then hard code those strings again. And as we know, hard coded strings written over and over are really prone to developer error. So we can actually capture this screen in an enum. And in this case, this app is really simple, so there's only one screen. So here, all of our cases represent elements that are on our screen. And the raw value of each enum case represents the text that is in that element. So you can see how each one may seem like di very different views, but the purpose of the enum is just to represent one screen at a time. We can extend that enum then to do our element queries. So in our first computed variable is static text, we're checking against the raw value of the enum to then look for if that label exists. And then we do the same with text fields. So let's revisit this test and rewrite it using our enum. First, instead of base currency with a raw value, all we have to do is use the base currency view case and check is static text. Similarly, for United States dollar, we replace that with the United States dollar view case and the is static text computer variable. And lastly, we replace that with the initial text field case and check that is text field is true. Now, testing the initial state is a great start, but where power in UI testing comes is in testing the functionality of your app. So testing those important user interactions. So we do that here. We're going to change our base currency to euro. And we want to write a test to make sure that that interaction is working well. So without using our enum, again, here you can see that we're hard coding all of the values of those strings, similarly how we were doing in our first initial state. So we're now going to rewrite this test using our enum. So again, we're checking if it is static text, because in this case, that lets us know that it's our base currency. Then here, we're actually asserting false. And the reason why we're asserting false is because if euro is not our base currency, it will be existing in that table, which means that it should not be a static text. 
We're going to skip over the third line of this text because we're actually going to improve it a bit later. But essentially what the third line is doing is tapping on the first element in our table, which is euro in this case. So after we do that tap action, we should then be able to verify that the euro view is now a label, which means it's our base currency. But this test is not necessarily the greatest yet because it's not understandable on why we're actually checking your view is static text as false. What does that mean? And then the third line, tapping on that element, that's not really clear what we're tapping on. So let's add some extensions to our enum. First, we can add this computed variable that checks if the current element is within a table cell. Now this app was written in Swift UI, so the list view, then each cell in the list view is actually a button. So what this is doing is it's looking at all the tables on our current screen, looking at the cells within that table, and then searching the buttons within those cells. And lastly, if we want to actually interact with those elements, we have to do more than just the queries. We have to actually get the XCUI element. So here, we're going to use those computed variables to then return the element so that we can interact with it. And we'll do it for each one of our computed variables. So static text, text field, and our newest computer variable is within table cell. And lastly, we have a fatal error here because in this very simple app, these are the three main elements that, we're, that we care about and that we're using. And of course, in a larger app, you would most likely be covering more cases. So let's revisit this functionality test. Instead of asserting false, what would actually make more sense is asserting true that the euro view is within the table cell. That actually gives us better signal to know what we're trying to test in this case. And then, instead of this really unclear app, table, cell, element, bound by, which, looking at it at first glance, it's not clear what this is doing, we can now just use our enum case to say app UI euro view element tap. And it's really clear which specific element we're tapping on. And lastly, we can add now another line to our test to make sure that after we've tapped on Euroview, that United States dollar view that was previously a label is now within our table. So now that we've written these tests, we can actually go back and improve some of our app UI enum code. We'll do that by first creating a new enum called element type. So before, we're doing a lot of the querying within that app UI enum. But the problem is, with an app with multiple screens, if we want to have an enum for each screen, we would then repeat those queries over and over. So we kind of want to abstract some of that out into a new enum. In this case, we just have these three cases, text field, static text, and table cell button. And of course, if you have more elements in your application, you would have more cases. Here we have a failable init that's going to go through and query all the different types of elements we have. And if it matches, it will set the case to that matching element. So we'll do this for text fields, for labels, and then that table cell button that I mentioned before. And otherwise, if it doesn't match any of these, we're going to return nil. Previously, this is how we were getting the element for in our app UI enum. But we want to move this out of the app UI enum and put it into the element type enum. And we'll do this with a simple function. So we'll take in a text and then use that text to perform the query and return the resulting XEUI element. And now you can see that we've moved out these queries. We can improve our app UI enum to be much simpler. So we'll add the type for element type on our app UI enum. We'll guard against, so where we were doing that fatal error before in our conditional ladder, we're going to do it in this guard statement in our type computer variable. And then now for element, instead of that conditional ladder, all we have to do is call get element on the element type enum with the raw value of the enumeration. And now these are what our computer variables look like before. But for each one, all we have to do is check that the type is equal to static text, text field, or table cell button. So it's abstracting that logic out and so that we don't have to perform those queries in our app UI enum. So let's do a quick recap. 
You can use enum cases for a particular screen to represent the different elements on the existing screen. And then you can have a computed variable for that element in your enum so that you can then take user interactions on whichever enum that you want to return. And then you can have a separate element type enum that could be reused for whichever enums that you have representing the various screens in your app. So now let's get into function builders. Function builders are new in Swift 5.1. And the purpose of function builders is not actually to add additional logic to your app, but it's more syntax sugar, and basically making your code easier to read and easier to write. So what would we like to do with function builders in this case is looking at our initial state tests, you see that we're using XCAssert true over and over and over get really tedious to write the same method over and over again, and it looks kind of cluttered. What we would like to do is to be able to simply call one method and just assert true. And that way, each Boolean in this statement is then being called on XC assert true, but we don't actually have to do it ourselves. So we can create a function builder to do this. Start out with this Boolean function builder. And any function builder is required to implement this method build block. And in this case, you can see it's really simple. It's just taking in any, any number of Boolean statements and then returning an array of those Booleans. The power comes from actually using this Boolean function builder as a parameter. So for this assert true method, we're going then going to call the builder on all of those Booleans that we then put into the parameters and simply just call XC assert true on each one of those Boolean statements. And we could do the same thing with assert false. So now we can use that assert true. And this just makes it much easier for us to group together those assert statements in our test instead of having to call assert true or assert false over and over and over again. And so again, it answers that question of making our tests easier to read and understand. So to recap function builders, they help make your code easier, easier to read and easier to write. And they can be really, really simple. I think that's the thing to really think about when, when it comes to function builders. They can get really complex, but you can also use them to really improve your code in a simple way. So for more resources, I highly recommend checking out the iOS automation with, UI, with XCUI test, which is a free course at Test Automation University written by Shasi, who inspired the whole um, enum example that I went went over, and then Testing Swift by Paul Hudson, which is a great comprehensive book going over unit, UI, integration tests, automation, and CI. And then lastly, if you're really interested in function builders, the awesome Function Builders GitHub repo has a long list of resources and cool function builders that folks in the community have created. Thank you.